Hey everybody, welcome back to the farthest frontier. Today we're going to be covering defense. Now today is also a little bit of a sad day as they have announced that patch 0.75 will be dropping either later today or tomorrow, which means this city will have to be re-rolled. But for today, we're going to talk about defending your city. Now the current state of my city is I rolled a map, I am on the plains map, that doesn't have stone, something that I know is going to change on the future patch. So I've been limited to pretty much much using palisade walls versus fortified. So let's get started there. On the outside of your town, once you have upgraded to your tier two town center, you pretty much want to put palisade walls everywhere. Taking a total of three labor and three logs, they give an, a bit of defense, a total of 1200. Once you move up to the palisade wall, Taking a total of four stone and 10 labor, it gives a total of 2,200. Again, that is a tier three located under walls and roads. And with that, you will need to build the gates. Now the gates are slightly more expensive, which makes a little bit of sense. The palisade gate takes 15 labor, 12 logs, and the fortified gate takes eight logs and 12 stones. Now, once you have surrounded your village or metropolitan, depending on how big you get, then you're gonna need to start placing some lookout towers to start defending. This is under defense. In, in the early game, all you'll be able to do is place the lookout tower until you have built the barracks. And the barracks becomes available, I believe, when you upgrade your town to level two. The lookout tower takes 100 labor, 25 logs, 10 stone, and 10 gold. Just to give a little bit of a comparison, you can see the yellow line and you can see the white line of the one underneath it. You can kind of get a range comparison of them. Thing to note, the lookout tower cost a total of five per month and can employ two soldiers. The upgraded version, the watchtower, can still employ two people and cost 10 gold for those same two people. The next building that you're going to want to build is the barracks. Now the barracks cost a total of 150 labor, 25 flanks, 25 stone, and 250 gold. And then it costs eight gold per soldier where the lookout tower was a stagnant of five and 10. Once you have upgraded it, it becomes the fort and all the fort does is give you the option to have more soldiers. The same amount of monthly costs still exist with it being eight per soldier. Now how to arm your soldiers? The first thing that you're going to need very early in the game and you're going to need this very early in the game because your hunters are also going to use it under resources is the Fletcher. Now the Fletcher tier one building takes 20 planks 40 labor and produces bows and arrows and once you upgrade the Fletcher building it becomes comes the Fletcher Workshop. Now, once you've upgraded to the Fletcher Workshop, if you have an iron supply, you will want to switch to crossbows. They are much stronger and give your soldiers a much better chance of downing your enemies. At this point in time, if you have a constant supply of iron, simply reduce the toggle so that you're not producing bows. If we took a look at our resources, you're going to see that I've been sitting on 95 bows for nearly 40 years. This will give them the ammunition for the lookout tower, as well as it will give your hunters everything that they need. Soldiers and your units need weapons. That is built in the blacksmith. This is a tier three building and requires you to buy a heavy tool from the trader. You have the blacksmith forge, cost a total of 100 labor, 20 planks, 15 stone, 250 gold, and a heavy tool. Produces tools weapons and heavy tools, which is once upgraded, it becomes the blacksmith workshop, which allows you to build heavy weapons. Where the Fletcher, you could get away with alleviating bows, you still need to produce weapons because your lookout towers use weapons and your soldiers will use the heavy weapons. After that, we need some armor and armor is produced in the armory. The armory is a tier two building, taking 100 labor, 25 stone, 300 gold, 40 planks, produces shields and halbers. Now once upgraded, the armory becomes an arsenal and allows you to build plate mail as well as the shields. Now like the Fletcher, you will want to turn off making halbers because once you have plate mail, your soldiers will simply swap over and again you will be stuck with them. I do personally keep a few on hand just in case. I need some in a pinch, but you could technically sell these off. All right, now that we've covered pretty much all the buildings you're going to need in order to kind of set up your defenses, let's talk about the units that are going to start attacking. The first few raids are going to be lightly armored units and your bows can easily take them down. Watchtowers 
and lookout towers are pretty much your go-to for the majority of the game. In the later game, when you start running into shield breakers and heavily armored champions, you will need soldiers in order to back your towers. In order to deploy your units, go ahead and select your barracks or fort, go ahead and hit your flag combat area, and go ahead and set it to the area that you want it. They will proceed to that area and kind of help defend it. Personally, I try to have enough defenses that they will down any enemies before I need to use my soldiers. Occasionally, they will break through my walls, which means I probably need another layer of walls in order to help. Let's go ahead and now that the combat is over, let's go ahead and hit return to our barracks to make sure that they return. I do plan on putting a uncut video of a battle of my town and I'll probably leave it as a unlisted video down in the description if you guys want to see kind of how that goes. As for the purpose of not making this guide too long, I don't want to include it in the actual guide itself. For the placement of the towers, this is the last thing I'm going to cover. I know I've kind of been a little bit back and forth in this guide and I know I'm, I'm a little bit out of sorts today. What you want to do is make sure that there's plenty of coverage between your first tower and your second tower. Now the reason for this is you want to have your towers helping defend each other. The next part of this that you want is you want to have line of defense in order to keep the soldiers from getting to your tower. Your soldiers will, your lookout towers that is, will not fight point blank, which means they will come out of their towers and fight with their swords and they are much more effective with their crossbows than they are hand-to-hand -hand melee. Putting a tower kind of behind a wall is the best way to do this. Now in the early game, a good solution to this is to simply take a wall and create create a box and I do a five by five box something that look about like this and then I will put a gate down in the, the back that will give them an area to walk in and then I will simply put a tower down kind of help it and what this will do is once they have built this this will give them an area that they can shoot the enemies on the outside without having to worry about them walking up to the tower and stopping their shooting. This should be everything you need to know about defending your town. Some special notes, I have seen maps like the river map where I've seen lakes and rivers give natural choke points. If you have them, use them. Thank you guys for joining. I'd like to thank everybody who has liked and subbed and watched over the last few days. The channel has grown exponentially in the last week and I just want to take a moment to say thank you. We will see you in patch 0.75.